Welcome to Mulready Minutes with Oklahoma Insurance Commissioner Glenn Mulready. This is a podcast about insurance for insurance folks, risk managers, and business leaders. We'll dive deep and look at what is and isn't working, talk to leaders in the industry, and keep you informed on what's happening in Oklahoma and around the country. Welcome to another Mulready Minutes podcast where we uh, typically get into the weeds and in, uh, in insurance and that sort of thing. But uh, today uh, we're doing something a little bit different and uh, I think for a second or third time, maybe with uh, a different statewide elected official. So we are honored today to have with us our uh, state treasurer, uh, Todd Russ. Todd's the 20th uh, treasurer for the state of Oklahoma and he took office almost a year ago, right? So you're kind of wrapping up your first year. Um, but Todd and I served together in the House uh, for a number of years, so a good friend and a good friend uh, here for the for the Sooner State. So uh, let me quickly read some some bio, and then you can fill in what I got wrong when okay. I go through. Yeah. <laughs> so with with deep roots in Western Oklahoma, Todd's journey began with a bachelor's degree in finance from Southwestern Oklahoma State University. His education background includes specialized training in asset and liability management. Uh, an interest risk interest rate risk analysis from the University of Colorado Graduate School of Banking. Todd's career spans over 30 years in the banking sector, but his service to the community doesn't end there. He represented District 55 in the Oklahoma House of Representatives for six terms, uh, notably serving as chairman of the House Transportation Appropriations and Budget Committee. Outside his professional life, Todd and his wife, Christy, are devoted members of New Beginnings Assembly of God Church in Cordell. I've been out there. Uh, 39 years of marriage have been blessed with three children and five grandchildren, uh, which epitomize the value of uh, family and community that, that Oklahoma is all about. So, Todd, welcome to our, our program. Thank you for taking time out of your well, schedule yeah. to join us. Thank you for letting me come, Commissioner. So, along with that bio, anything you'd want to add to that at all, Todd? I just rattled off no, the written some, bio. but some, Somebody did a great job on that bio. I may have to. <laughs> Tone it down a little bit, but I think it's mostly honest. <laughs> Tell me about your grandkids. Oh, man, fantastic. Five wonderful grandkids. They span from almost seven to two, so that's that perfect range. And, uh, yeah, matter of fact, we had two of them all weekend this weekend. If I look a little tired and wore out, I've been chasing a seven-year-old and a five-year-old. So, yeah, it's been uh-huh. great. Good. I'm sure Christy yeah. loves that there. <laughs> so uh, you took office not even a year ago, now State Treasurer's Office. Let me ask you sort of just off the cuff. I don't know, eight months in, nine months in, whatever we are. Um, what's been the biggest surprise as state treasurer? You know, it's it's gone really, really well. It's been uh, exciting thinking that I could get to serve as the state treasurer coming from a banking background. Honestly, it's it's like being back in my bank. It's been so... Uh, so um, normal for the financial world compared to the political, you know, kind mm-hmm. of they call it a you know a full contact sport in politics, <laughs> as you know, and and coming from that to something a little bit more reasonable and professional as far as the just being involved in the numbers and kind of you know keeping the bank books balanced and uh, keeping an eye on the state's money and looking out for the taxpayers in, in Oklahoma. Um, no real big surprises. It's been a really great transition. Um, I just, I couldn't be happier. So comfortable coming in and not a, not a difficult transition into that role. You've, you're enjoying it and it's comfortable. Yeah. No, it's just, it's like being home. It's, it's fantastic. It's been great. Good. It's really good. So let's talk about that treasurer role. I mean, I'm sure people out there think you just sit in your office and count money all day. <laughs> But tell us about the different uh, roles and, and responsibilities uh, within the treasurer's office. We definitely count money all day, but I'm not the only one counting <laughs> the money. We we manage billions of dollars, and uh, that's a that's a that's a big number. I mean, we our our portfolio alone in the treasuries over 15 billion dollars that we watch over every day. We're we're buying and selling money. We're we're investing in the market, and we're pulling liquidity out for uh, agencies and departments and taking care of all of that. And that seems to be kind of the core focus, but we do so many, many more things than just the, just the banking part of it. Um, we have a, an entire division uptown that's the unclaimed property division. That's a, a major part of what the state treasurer's office does. Um, as you know, in a, in a statewide elected position, you're sitting on lots of boards and commissions. I'm on, I think, 10 boards and commissions. So we're in meetings regularly keeping up with the oversight of those types of things. 
and uh, just, you know, always something going on policy-wise and different types of things, interacting with the legislature, those kinds of things. But, uh, uh, you know, taking care of the taxpayer's dollar is absolutely the most important thing that, uh, first and foremost, what I do to protect that for safety and soundness and liquidity. Um, The rate market's been really phenomenal it's just it's been a 10 20 year turnaround from one direction to the other and that's put a new a lot of new dynamics into the any of the financial markets that's gone from being able to sell treasuries at a profit to now if you have to sell they're going to be at a loss if they're something prior to november of last year so we really are having to redo the strategic planning on those types of things but but for the most part, the state is actually making more money on their investment than ever in history. It's been absolutely remarkable and uh, in, enjoying that ride. So as the treasurer in that treasurer's office, you are, well, I mean, day to day, month to month, quarter to quarter, making those decisions on, on where, to, where to park, if you will, or in, invest the state funds. Is that correct? Or, and how does that work? Is there a uh, is there an investment committee with the treasurer's office, or how, how does that? You know, that really, uh, no, there really isn't. That's the treasurer, and I've got staff. I've got a chief investment officer, and uh, you know, personnel around me that we collectively, you know, make uh, big decisions. But the day to day, it's kind of like you know, in my bank, every night we see what our reserves are, and we decide whether to buy our self fed funds. Uh, we decide whether to buy a treasury or, a, or we don't really invest in stock at the state uh, treasurer level. We, we're pretty restricted to treasuries, bonds. We can buy some mortgage-backed products and a few things, but it's pretty thin. But, you know, we're wanting to check what our yield of maturities look like, how far out we want to go, how much liquidity we want to mm-hmm. hold on to. And that's just, I mean, that's just an everyday three o'clock decision, you know you know, where do we go? So those, those are things that, that the treasurer watches every day, kind of monitoring those things. And, uh, you know, we have a, we have a lot of money that we invest with lots of different people. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, and that's interesting because we also do a lot of other transactional business for the state, the credit card activity in the state for OESC, for the unemployment commission, for the SNAP programs, for the tax commission, tens of thousands, if not millions of transactions a year in the credit card area. And that's interesting because when you look at who does that business for the state, we we oversee and we work with third parties uh, that are large, large money managers to, to take on those transactions. And um, not many providers across the nation are the big players in the credit card business as far as the transactional business. So that's um, interesting when you're doing it at the scale of the state of Oklahoma where you're talking about tens of billions of dollars. You would like to go out and, and ask any of your state banks in Oklahoma, would you like this business? And most of them just can't handle can't it. Handle it. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. It's interesting. Yeah. Well, um, and you mentioned uh, unclaimed property. We'll get to that a little bit later because I do want to talk about that and kind of the connection sort of with our office and, and our, our space in that. But um, tell me about any other um, initiatives or special projects or anything you guys have going or that you are looking ahead to a year from now or something that, through your office. Yeah, you know, I will say one thing that's maybe this was the surprising thing now that I think about your first question. Uh, It's interesting how many people think that the state treasury is part of the tax commission and Mm -hmm. want wonder if we collect taxes or, you know, take people's money. And the answer is no, we do not collect any taxes. The tax commission takes care of all of that. Uh, The tax commission collects the taxes and the revenue for the state, and then they deposit them in their bank, which is the state treasury. And uh, we, we put those into all the places that we think need to be managed from that point on. So, uh, you know, a big, big part of our job is not collecting taxes and we are not part of the state tax commission. They collect and it and hand it to you. That's exactly right. <laughs> and I love it that way. I sure don't want to collect taxes. But uh, anyway, that's that's one big distinction that we, we do uh, uh, provide. Um, several of the other services, you know, from wire transfers, depositories, you know, a, an agency may be down in Idabel or Durant or, or Beaver County or somewhere in Osage County and say, look, we, we need another account opened in a bank uh, for, for certain reasons. So the Treasury uh, 
goes through that process because no state agency, there might be one or two exceptions that I can't think of, no state agency can open a, a bank account on their own. Everything has to be handled through the state treasurer's office, so we'll go through the due diligence process and open those accounts uh, as needed and make sure that they meet all the criteria for depositories and those types of things. So that's a little bit of how those nuances work with the treasurer's office. One of the big things that we did when I first came in was we switched over our our investment platform off of an older style platform to a Bloomberg platform, which really, it's a very unique platform, but it's more of a a, a more modern, late style trading platform. And it really gets us out into the open market better, gives us more exposure, gives a better play and field to price our our products. And uh, we've just had a phenomenal success off of that. Uh, I mean, the I mean, the first, uh, just the first few months we were here, we were we were breaking record after record after record on earnings off of the investments. Part of that was the rate environment trends were beginning to change, but we were just able to really get some great market pricing and access out there. So that was a that was a kind of a kickoff change that we were able to see happen. One of the biggest uh, challenges I've got in the in the Treasury is the IT conversion that we, like all the other state agencies, are needing to convert off the old mainframe systems. And the Treasury just happens to be that unique agency that interacts with all the other agencies and their partners. And there's like 2,000 portals that we have to be able to have people have access or we have access through. So having people available uh, out in the third-party vendor world to handle that kind of a load has been very problematic. And, ex- you know, it's, it looks like it's going to be extremely expensive to upgrade the technology in the Treasury's office. But we've been on this old system for decades, and we we just got to get off of that. And it's not going to be an easy process. I, I've gone through that. Or cheap. <laughs> yeah, or cheap. I've gone through a couple of those in banking and uh, – um, it's just, you know, it's just, it's a very complex, very frustrating, but necessary process that we're going to have to go through. And, and hopefully we don't have a lot of big bumps in the road, but, but we're in that process trying to get that to happen yeah. over the next year. Yeah, you'll get through that. Hey, so I'm sure some people are thinking, hearing all of that, just a big broad question. How is the state doing financially? You know what? The state's doing fantastic financially. When you compare it to the the national economy and even the world economy, That you've, we've seen a lot of slippage over the last eight or nine months, maybe almost a year now. Since November, we've seen a lot of trends begin to change. Rates have gone up. Uh, inflation's been a major concern. And uh, that's really kind of pushed down a lot of from from part of the commodities to other industries. And we've seen, you know, a lot of top down pressure and the numbers nationwide, the numbers are starting to slip for different states. But compared to most of the other states, Oklahoma is faring very well. We our overall trends have been slipping back. But if you look at our 12 month year to year, 12 month comparisons, if we looked at August from 12 months from this August to the 12 months of last August. And we look at those in 12 month cycles and we, we walk that up 12 month cycles. So it's a little bit unique for a lot of people. They just want a month to month or a year over year. But if you look at those ever since the slippage began and a lot of people's revenues started slowing down, even those are, even though Oklahoma's revenue has slowed down. We have beat the last 12 months cycles for the last six months in a row in spite of the downturn. So the the dynamic part of our economy has really proven to be robust. Uh, and we're, we're susceptible to oil and gas fluctuations more than a lot of states, although in the last 20, 30 years, it's not nearly what people I think it is. I mean, there's still a very significant industry. We just have so many more industries built around them that we're, we've spread out that economic mm-hmm. base yeah, right. so much in Oklahoma and so much diverse, uh, you know, from, from aerospace to research to technology, all sorts of things that we, we never thought about. And so that's really buffered that downturn in the oil and gas prices that we've seen happen in the last few months. And we've seen them come back up, but they're slipping a little bit this week. 
So in spite of all of those things, I mean, it's just amazing that for, for the last five, six months in a row, we've still beat the last 12-month cycle uh, revenue numbers. And at some point, probably next month, we'll probably slide back behind that 12 months. But compared to the times you and I have seen in the legislature, it'll probably be a long time before we see anything close to that. Hopefully, we never will. I don't think we will. But uh, yeah. Good the, news. Yeah. That's fantastic. Good news. Okay. Really good. Hey, let's go back to unclaimed property. Um, you mentioned that as a part of yep. your, your your division, or it's a division part of the state treasurer's office. Tell us a little bit about that, um, how that operates. I think you've got a separate location for that. Um, yeah, we do. What kind of money are we talking about coming through that and some of the yep. initiatives tied to that? You know, that is such an important subject matter for Oklahomans, and they really, they really struggle to get their head around what is unclaimed property? What does that mean to them? What's those numbers look like for the state of Oklahoma? That That is a billion dollars, in excess of $1 billion in unclaimed property for the state of Oklahoma. And that's not surplus tax revenue. That's the lost and found bin. I mean, it's, you know, yeah. if you went to, you know, yeah, if you went to a Thunder game and you noticed all the crowd in there and after the crowd leaves, I mean, there's probably buckles, bu- buckets and bins full of unclaimed property people have left. Well, there's over a billion billion dollars in value of unclaimed property for the state of Oklahoma. It's just truly mind-boggling. Over a million Oklahomans have some some claim to unclaimed property that most of them don't even probably realize. And we are just doing everything we can to get the word out, promote, publish, uh, speak about it, uh, tell people, please go on our website, uh, OK Money, um, Oklahoma Money, I think it's uh, yourmoney.ok.gov. Uh, yourmoney.ok.gov. Go on that website, put in your name. It's just amazing how many people have some kind of unclaimed property that, uh, and it's just, you, you just, you think of it, it's probably on the list of different kinds of unclaimed property that are out there over a billion dollars. Yeah, that's a lot. You guys do a good job with those um, commercials, PSAs is a good yeah. effective way to get that word out there for the, the yeah. treasure hunt theme. Mm-hmm. I think. And mm-hmm. I know every time I get the publication, uh, you know, I'm looking right up there alphabetically. Good. <laughs> That's good. You know, we publish in, in all the county papers, uh, and then we publish in the Oklahoma County paper as well. And we still put it in hard print. I mean, people think, why do you use? But, you know, in the rural area, that, uh, you know, the local newspaper is still a significant media. And so we don't want to abandon anything that might help people find that. But we do have a lot of website uh, a lot of uh, other types of digital media that we promote those uh, unclaimed uh, valuables that people would know about and try to get that word out there and yeah. really hope they do. Well, I'm going to steal a minute to talk about what I mentioned, our connection with the yeah. unclaimed property. A lot of folks don't know, but when a life insurance policy goes unclaimed, so you know, life insurance policy gets paid when someone files a claim, not necessarily when someone dies, right? They've got to know about it if someone dies. So uh, at any rate... Um, if, if a policy goes unclaimed, which a lot of times mom or dad passes away, kids are talking, I think mom had a policy. She mentioned that once, and but can you find it? Can you do that? Well, we have a great tool. We're trying to take away some of the work that you're doing, <laughs> make it a little easier That's on great. you. Yeah. And uh, so we have a life policy locator. So folks can go on and complete a short form. That communication goes out to every life insurance company to see if there's a policy out there. And so um, since I came into office, we've now connected Oklahomans with over $93 million of life insurance benefits that they didn't know they had. And so um, great tool. Everybody needs to know about that. But ultimately what happens with that life policy, if it goes unclaimed, that death benefit is then when they turn 100 years old on paper, that gets turned over to the unclaimed property fund. It becomes part of that. So you're now publishing that person who's passed away, their name or that beneficiary's name and um, trying to connect them at that point. But it's a very effective tool we've had that has that tie to uh, unclaimed yeah. property. So, you know, we, we have $196 million just in insurance category claims. So uh, pro- obviously we had a lot more than that. You're getting a lot of it out there, but that, that gives people an idea of just how many things that, you know, maybe grandpa and grandma didn't want the family to know they had a life insurance policy or something for whatever reason. There's just a lot of those things. You could conjure that, up lots uh, of crazy reasons. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, man, that category it could go everywhere. But yeah, this it's a big category. And um, thank you for what you do to kind of preempt that on the front end before we get it, or it'd be it'd be twice that big. Good. 
Well, Todd, as we wrap up, anything else that you'd like folks out there to know about the treasurer's office, about any, yourself, anything at all? You know, you I, I, I would just like for them to know how, how many people are actually involved in the state treasurer's office directly or indirectly, mm-hmm. especially with unclaimed property. But but anything we have is virtually a free service. I mean, we're here to serve the people. Um, we're we're in, in our offices five days a week ready to help people with uh, all the different areas that that uh, relate to the state treasurer's office, from unclaimed property to other types of services through the treasury. And, um, and it's free. I mean, we want people people to feel feel like they can ask, access those things and uh, be available for, for the public. Good. Well, with that, thank you for coming on with us. Thank you for the job you do. Uh, folks, you heard it. I mean, Todd, our state treasurer is managing your our money, <laughs> the state's yes, money. And yes. so thank you for the job that you, you do and appreciate you coming on, taking time out of your busy schedule to yeah, be with us. Well, thank so. you for uh, letting me be here. Appreciate okay. that very much. So that wraps up this episode of the Mulready Minutes po- podcast. Thank you for joining us and State Treasurer Todd Russ. We appreciate you watching. If you found this episode informative, please subscribe and share with your colleagues. Visit oid.ok.gov slash podcast. Let us know what topics you would like to hear about on this podcast. Until next time, take care from the Oklahoma Insurance Department.